Mr. and Mrs. North, starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning. until she's fired. Jerry, you can't fire Millie. Okay, you fire her. But darling, she's so old and helpless. That's the trouble. She's losing her mind. This is the fifth Sunday in succession that she's dragged me out of bed. Well, she doesn't mean to. I guess one day just seems like another to Millie. Now, Pam, she's got to go. All right. Go ahead and tell her. That's your job. Nothing of the kind. You're the head of the house. Yeah, only when there's something unpleasant to be done. Oh, darling, I haven't the heart. You're much more forceful than I am. You do it. Well, it's high time you learn to be forceful. You do it. I do it myself. I quit. Oh, Millie, you, you can't. He didn't mean it. Honestly, he didn't. I did so. Besides, you, you have no right to snoop. I wasn't snooping. I was only listening to see if you were up. I guess I know when I'm not wanted. Now look what you've done. What I've been wanting to do for weeks. Oh, listen, Pam. This time, let's get a butler, a man. I don't want to. Well, why not? I don't like men. Jerry, let's get a couple. We are a couple. We don't need another. Mrs. Wentworth next door has a couple, and she's a widow. Well, if I were Mrs. Wentworth's husband, I'd die, too. References are all they say you are, Oliver. You should do fine. I'm sure I shall prove satisfactory, ma'am. Uh, I'm sure you will, too. Oh, there's just one thing. You don't get Sundays mixed up, do you? I beg your pardon, ma'am. Well, Mr. North is very particular about not being awakened on Sunday. I shall make a mental note of it, madam. Thank you. Uh, when can you start? Well, tomorrow, if that's satisfactory. Oh, that'll be fine. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock. Oh, Mrs. Bentley. Oh, Mrs. North. There's nothing today. I've been out to lunch. I've just hired Oliver. He's starting tomorrow. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. North, but there's been a mistake. I've already assigned Oliver to another position. I'd rather work for Mrs. North. We've made all the arrangements. Wages, days off, and hours. Well, I'm very sorry to disappoint you, Mrs. North, but that's out of the question. What's more, I don't think Oliver would suit you. Well, why wouldn't he? He's used to working on large estates, taking care of a great many people. He's never done apartment work. Well, I'm quite sure I'm capable of taking care of you and your husband, Mrs. North. There, you see. But what can I tell the people I promised him to? Tell them I decided against taking the position. I shall be there as arranged, madam. Goodbye, Mrs. Bentley. I'm sorry about the mix-up, but I'm sure it'll be all right. I'll expect you now. You have the address. It's just a block from here. I know why you're doing this. You want to get away from me. Don't deny it. Well, since you already know the truth, there's no need to deny it. Do me a favor, will you? Stay away from me. I serve the coffee. Not bad. Not bad at all. After eating yourself into a coma. You know, if we get too enthusiastic, we'll spoil him. Oh, the blessed piece of Sunday since Millie left. Hello, handsome. 
Are you all finished with dinner? Helen, you know you shouldn't be here. Where's your husband? Ah, oh, don't worry about him. He's out walking Mrs. Wentworth's dog. You know, we've got to be careful. We can't take too many chances. Too careful for one little kiss? Oh, a quick one. They're waiting for their coffee. I'll get back before your husband does. Uh, you know, I think I can get rid of him Thursday. I'll see you then. Hmm? Yeah, we'll talk about it some other time. Honestly, between a jealous husband and a cautious lover. <laughs> well, I never have any fun. I... You... Thank you very much for lending me the storeroom key, Mr. Jameson. Uh, believe me. Up to your old tricks. Well, what business is it of yours? I could tell Mrs. North what's going on. There's nothing going on. That was the maid from the apartment next door. She came over to borrow the key to the basement storeroom. And out of gratitude for the loan, left lipstick all over your face. All right, tell Mrs. North. See where it gets you. I didn't come here to quarrel out her. Well, what did you come here for? I sent you the money for your commission. What more do you want? Didn't you get my letter? Yes, I got it. Then why didn't you answer it? Because we're through. I don't believe it. Oliver, I meant what I said in that letter. I'll make you a partner in the agency. I'll do anything if you'd only come back. Well, I'd rather stay here. Any place where I don't have to look at you. Now, get out. I won't get out. You can't treat me like this. I've given you money and jobs. In the best years of your life, don't forget that one. No, I won't forget it. I don't think you can treat me like this and get away with it. Don't get hysterical. They'll hear you. I don't care. Oliver, I want you back. Please. I'd rather be dead. Maybe that can be arranged. Here. Is that what you want? You want to use that on me like you did on your late husband? How dare you bring that up? Because it's always on my mind. What I did, I did for you. That's always been your story. You even had me believing it for a while. Now remember, no more threats. Let me remind you your last threat was in writing. Oh, oh, Mrs. Bendley, hello. I just dropped in to see how Oliver was doing. I hope he suits you. Oh, he couldn't be better, even if it does spoil him. I'm so delighted, Mrs. North. I'm sorry to be late with the coffee, madam. I'll serve it right away. Oh, there's no hurry. I didn't know you had company. <laughs> oh, Mrs. Bentley is just leaving. Thank you for Oliver, Mrs. Bentley. I hope those other people got someone half as good. <laughs> you seem to have wormed your way in with her, too. Now get out, or do I have to put you out? Don't forget you, Eleanor. Well, that's too bad. Because I've already forgotten you. You expecting company? Only you. And you're here. <laughs> Are Mr. and Mrs. North in? Oh, heaven help us. It's Mrs. Wentworth. I'll see, madam. Oh, never mind. I know they're in. The elevator boy told me. Trapped like traps in a trap. <laughs> Gerald, how nice to find you in. And Mrs. Wentworth, won't you have a cup of coffee with us? Oh, no, thank you, my dear. I can only stay a moment until Abelard gets back. Abelard? Abelard, my dog. He's out walking. I should like to talk to you alone. Oh, of course. That will be all for this evening, Oliver. You may go whenever you wish. Thank you, madam. I'll tidy up the kitchen. My dears. I'm afraid I've bad news for you. The plumbing gone wrong again? Oh, no. Much worse than that. My butler's threatened to leave and take his wife with him. Oh, oh what a pity. But, my dears, I'm afraid you'll have to let Oliver go. What? You mean so we can start out even, both without butlers? You don't understand. Edgar's threatened to quit because of Oliver. And what, may I ask, has Oliver done to Edgar? He's been carrying on with Edgar's wife, Helen. Oh, I don't believe it. Oliver isn't the type to carry on, especially with somebody's wife. Mm. Edgar saw them kissing in the hall. You want us to talk to him about that? We couldn't. Why don't you talk to Helen? It, it takes two to make a kiss. 
I've already done that. Of course she denied it. Well, then it's undoubtedly not true. Oh, that's probably Edgar now. He promised to let me know the moment Avalard came home. <laughs> Is Mrs. Wentworth in? Coming, Edgar. You watch your step with Helen or all. Thank you, Edgar. Good night, Pamela. Gerald. You will do what I ask, won't you? Will there be anything else? Uh, could we speak to you for a moment, Oliver? Why, of course, madam. Well, well you, you see, it's it? this way. <laughs> well, Mrs. Wentworth has some crazy idea. Absolutely ridiculous. Well, she has an idea that, that you and... I don't believe a word of it. Pam. Well, uh, it seems that Edgar, that's Mrs. Wentworth's butler... He thinks you're carrying on. Carrying on, madam. You know, carrying on. I'm afraid I don't. He suspects you, and what's her name? Mrs. Edgar. Oh, madam, sir, I hardly know the lady. You see, Jerry hardly knows her. Well, I didn't say he did. Perhaps I can explain, if I may say so, from the backstairs gossip, that Mr. Jenkins, Edgar, that is, is an intensely jealous person. If his wife so much as talks to another man, he suspects the worst. Isn't that awful? Some husbands never learn. I, I think we'd better forget it ever came up. Well, thank you, sir. Good night, ma'am. Good night, Oliver. What's the idea of making me the heavy? Well, darling, I was just trying to help. You men have such evil minds. Well, that's better than not having any mind at all. Residence, Oliver speaking. Hello, uh, this is Mr. North's relief secretary. Mr. North asked me to phone and tell you that he would like some insurance papers that are kept in the basement storeroom. They're in a wooden file. Yes. Yes, you'll find them there. And Mr. North would like to have you bring them to his office sometime this morning. Yes, I will. Thank you. It's goodbye. Excuse me, madam. Yes, Oliver? I just had a phone call from your husband's office. He wanted me to bring him some insurance papers from a fire in the basement storeroom. Well, I've just been down there and I don't see any sign of a fire. That's odd. I don't remember us ever having a fire. I'll phone Jerry and find out. Oh, oh, wait a minute. We have some papers in an old trunk down there. They must be in there. Uh, 
The trunk key is on the kitchen board. I'll go right down, madam. Never mind, Oliver. I'm going down to my husband's office. I'll take the papers. Oh, but you mustn't go into the storeroom, madam. Why not? Oh, it's very dusty down there. You'll spoil your dress. Then I'll get my husband to buy me a new one. she is? Well, she said she'd be home at 5. That's almost 6.30 and we're going out tonight. Well, I don't know where she went after she left your office, sir. My office? Mrs. North wasn't at my office. Well, that's odd, sir. She said she was going to bring you those insurance papers. What papers? Well, your relief secretary phoned me this morning and said you wanted some insurance papers from a file in the basement storeroom. Well, I couldn't find them, so Mrs. North went down to look for them. Now, wait a minute. I didn't have any relief secretary this morning, and I didn't ask for any papers. When was the last time you saw Mrs. North? Why, this morning, sir, when she left to go down to the store. Come on, we're going down. For just a minute, sir, I'll get the keys. Well, let's go out the back way. Wigand, it, it's as clear as can be. This man murdered poor Edgar because he wanted to carry on with that woman. That's not true. Well, of course it is. Now, just a moment. A knife was missing from your kitchen. You had the motive, the weapon, and the opportunity. And you could very easily have followed him down to the storeroom. By the way, did you send him down there? Uh, yes. I wanted him to bring up a traveling case for Abelard. Hmm? My dog. Oh, no. What about the phone call from Jerry's office? That's why Oliver went down, not to follow anybody. Well, since the phone call didn't come from your husband's office, it might have been made up by, uh, by Oliver. Well, I assure you, sir, someone did phone. Of course they did. Why, Oliver even came back and told me he couldn't find the file. Then when I wanted to go look for the papers... Go on, Pam. Well, Oliver wanted to look for them. He didn't want me to get my dress soiled. He didn't want you to find the body. If you're so sure I did it, sir, why don't you arrest me? Oh, no. You can't. You mustn't. Well, I guess that proves who's the murderer. She probably put him up to it. Oh, now, I wouldn't jump to conclusions, Mrs. Wentworth. You better come along with me. I want to ask you a few more questions in private. Do you mind? All right, go ahead. Oh. Jerry. Mrs. Bentley. Who? Mrs. Bentley, the woman that runs the employment agency. She didn't want me to hire Oliver. Sounds like an intelligent woman. She was in the kitchen. She could have taken the knife. And killed a butler from next door? <laughs> the agency business can't be that bad. Come on, now go to sleep. Darling. I'm hungry. Do you want to raid the icebox? I do not. I want to sleep. Well, I'll be right back. Any other woman couldn't eat for a week. Not you. A murder and you get...
Yes, Mrs. Bentley, I should have listened to you all along. But I did my best to keep you from taking Oliver. Just remember that. Oh, I do. I do. It was just my stubborn streak. But of course, you didn't tell me he was a murderer. But then how are you to know? You just have to take people on faith, don't you, Mrs. Bentley? Oh, dear, I wish they'd find that knife and solve this case. I'm so upset. The knife? Oh, didn't you know? Uh, they never found it. They think the murderer took it. Uh, of course, I have my own theory. Do you, Mrs. North? Yes. I think it's still in the basement. I called Lieutenant Wigand, and he said they'd come over this afternoon and look for it again. Oh, but that isn't our problem, is it, Mrs. Bentley? Uh, well, goodbye, Mrs. Bentley. Goodbye. something, Mrs. Bentley? So it's a trap. Where's the knife? Come on, where is it? Probably where you hid it. No, it's not. There's no knife here. But there's a murderer, isn't there, Mrs. Bentley? What are you talking about? The letter you wrote Oliver. I read it. You threatened his life if he wouldn't come back to you. Well, you'll never live to tell anyone about it, Mrs. North. This time, Mrs. North, we don't even need a knife. And don't bother to scream, Mrs. North, because nobody's going to hear you. Mrs. North is directed by Ralph Francis Murphy, a John W. Loveton production. Produced by Federal Telefilms. Starring Barbara Britton and Richard Denning, featuring Francis DeSales. This has been a film presentation.